If you want to do platforming in Game Builder's Garage, you're usually going to be using the person. However, the person has a couple of nasty properties on his jump. Like here, when you jump in midair, it's really hard to correct your position, even though he has a pretty high movement speed on him. Sometimes we also don't want wall jumps and we do want double jumps. Today I'm going to teach you how to program completely customized jumps for your player characters. For example, this moving block has a jump, a double jump, and also he can do control jumps. Lastly, I can also make it so he doesn't really have the ability to wall jump. The goal here is to teach you how to program all sorts of different types of jumps so you're not really forced to be stuck with the person or the car's jumps and all the baggage that comes along with it. In order, today I'm going to talk about a single jump, a double jump, a controlled jump, and putting both types of jumps on one character. Let's go. Before I can teach you how to program any jumps, first I need to ask you, what is a jump? No, seriously, like mathematically, what is a jump? When you press a jump button, what is supposed to happen? Let's say that we're jumping from rest. Here I'm plotting the character's Y velocity. So imagine here we have like a block on the floor, it has zero Y velocity. Then when you press the jump button, you expect that Y velocity to very quickly become very big, like a very positive Y velocity. So now we're going up. That's the point of a jump, we're going up. Now that we're going up away from the floor, gravity is gonna slowly decelerate us down until we have a negative Y velocity. Here's when we reach the peak of our jump and eventually we hit the floor and slam right back down to zero speed. This is the main idea with a jump. We need to code this little block of code, the part that sends us and our velocity up in the air. So you'd imagine, well, just take our Y velocity and add plus five to it or whatever. Let me show you a quick example of a terrible jump. Here, you press a jump button, which activates a timer, which gives an output for 0.05 seconds. Then we map that up, so we have plus five Y acceleration for some amount of time. And here's the jump that we get. That looks pretty all right, right? So I, I wonder why Loop is calling this a bad jump. That doesn't seem too bad to me. Well, what if we're here on a moving platform in a platformer, which is pretty common, and then we press jump. We're adding plus five to our current jump, which technically is kind of what should be happening in the right reference frame of the elevator, but in the context of a platformer, that's pretty bad. Then if I'm moving down, my jump becomes way smaller than before, which feels really bad, right? Like this jump, that is a really tiny jump. So in general, this scheme kind of works, but it's gonna probably break down pretty quickly in the context of a real level. The issue here is that our player might begin their jump when they don't have a zero Y velocity. And so if you are going up, then just adding to your Y velocity will give you a much larger perceived jump than normal. And if you're going down, this will give you a much smaller perceived jump than normal. That may make sense in the real world where you're jumping in the reference frame of the elevator. But what you really want to have in a video game is that when you press jump, you get a fixed amount of height. You don't really care so much about the velocity. So at the end of the jump, you want that no matter what your original Y velocity was, you want that that Y velocity should go to give you the normal Y velocity for your jump so that you get the same amount of jump height relative to where you started. Yeah, that's not how it's gonna go down in the real world, but this is a video game and we need it to feel good. So the goal here is that whenever you press the jump button, we want to get your Y velocity to a specific value no matter where we started at. The code for the jump has two main blocks. One is to check that a valid jump input was pressed and the second gets us to the target Y velocity. First, let's work on the jump button. We only want to jump when we press the jump button and we are standing on some sort of floor and we're checking for that floor using a touch sensor that is under the player character. This just checks for some sort of solid object. Keep in mind that the touch sensor doesn't know the difference between solid or damaging or destructive or anything. It just sees the object. So you need to be mindful when using the touch sensor. But when we press jump and we're on the floor, then we're going to start off this timer. The timer has no delay, but it continues its output for 0.05 seconds, which is about three frames long. That is three frames of accelerating to the target velocity. The second block of code gets us to a speed of our choosing. So how much do we want to accelerate? Here we're gonna take our desired upward velocity of 10 and subtract out our current Y velocity. The difference between these two numbers grows the farther away we are from the desired velocity. Then I'm gonna use a map to scale it depending on the situation, and I'll get to that more later. So in general, this block of code is giving me a one while we're supposed to be accelerating to the target velocity, and this block of code tells us how much we need to accelerate. We multiply them together, so we're only accelerating while we're supposed to be jumping, 
and we feed that result straight into the moving block's Y acceleration. Here's the end result. It's a nice little jump. We can only jump when we're on ground, and that's kind of it. There are two notes I want to make here. First is that this block can be attached to something else as a custom character, and so it can drive the physics of moving another character or another series of blocks that are connected, moving those around. The second is the map that I glossed over. Let's say I'm at my current velocity, and this is the velocity I want for my jump. The idea is that we are putting in that speed vector, the, the vector that goes from our current speed to the desired speed. But let's say that we use the map to accelerate more than needed, right? Well, here we're gonna greatly overshoot this block. Instead of going to that speed, because this happens on a frame by frame basis, we're gonna go at the very wrong speed. And then what can happen is now we're calculating this difference, and if we do that times two, then we can just spiral out of control. And so then the game will never actually reach the desired velocity, it's just gonna spiral out. In contrast, if we don't accelerate enough, then it's gonna take us more frames to get to our desired velocity vector. And as a result, sometimes our jumps will be a little bit higher or a little bit lower, and that is terrible. The point is that you only have a few frames to reach that desired velocity before the switch turns back off. So you need to get close to this desired velocity fast. So what is this map for? This map right now is just times one, it does nothing. And that's because the entire mass of the object is the moving block that I'm trying to move around. If I attach this to another object, or let's say a person node on, then what's gonna happen is that there's not gonna be enough acceleration because it's trying to pull around the person. And so this isn't enough. Times one is not enough. This number, the number that you put into this map is going to really depend on how much mass roughly you have in the moving object versus the entire assembly for the custom physics engine that you're making. And I'll show that more with the next example. The first jump takes the longest to explain just because there's the most physics associated with it, but after that, it's a lot easier to understand. Next, I'm gonna show you how to program a double jump. So here, we have a person, I'm using the person's normal first jump, and then I'm putting in a double jump. You'll notice that the way that I've coded this double jump is kind of different from some tutorials that I've seen, where no matter when I jump, no matter what my speed was, we are getting the same height from that jumping position. This is very important because when you press a double jump, you expect your player character to rise a very specific height. It would feel really bad if sometimes your jumps are a little bit higher or sometimes a little bit lower and it's just kind of janky and inconsistent or whatever, like that's just bad. So we want to program very consistent jumps. So how are we gonna do this? Well, this person has this normal jump for the first jump, but now we're gonna do attach this moving block which has a very, very small mass and he's in acceleration mode. This moving block is the, gonna be the main part that drives this person upward. And this moving block is gonna go straight to the center because moving blocks are gonna apply force based on where they are in the object. And I want to apply force from its center of mass. That way I don't start turning my object or turning my custom character or whatever. In general, it's just like taking our previous moving block and just attaching it straight to a person. So what's different for a double jump versus a single jump? The acceleration part of the double jump is basically the same. We're getting speed that goes up to our target speed, and this time I'm gonna map that one to three. And that's because the moving block is very small in comparison to the person, that this gives us the right amount of upward speed. If instead I use a very large moving block, and so that block is very massive, then now my person will just yeet off into oblivion. This is bad, and that's why this map is here. This map basically helps us correct and find the right scaling number just to make sure that the fraction of the mass of this block versus the whole assembly is correct. So how do we code the double jump? First, a double jump is gonna be kind of like on a flag. So this flag tells us that the double jump is not available. So a one means that it's not available and a zero means that we are being allowed to double jump. This touch sensor, which checks for the floor, will turn off the flag to make the double jump available whenever we touch the floor. Then we can spend our double jump only when we press the jump button and we are not on the floor. We have to be in midair. Again, this is on press. This will trigger the flag to go from zero to one, which will then give off a trigger from zero going into a timer. This way we can apply that impulse only once when we spend that double jump. And this timer is once again for three frames, so 0.05 seconds. Then it's the same as before. The calculator is like an if statement if we're supposed to be accelerating upward, then tell me how much we're gonna accelerate. And as a result, we now have a very consistent double jump, one that doesn't really depend on when in the jump arc we jump. Of course, we can do the exact same thing with the moving block. 
where the difference is that we're going to nix the player's own single jump button, and now we're going to bring in that single jump feature by combining it with what we had before. The only difference between the double jump code and the single and double jump code is that we've added this and statement where if we are on the floor and we just press the jump button, then hit the trigger to start accelerating upward. And just like that, we now have a moving block that has a very consistent single jump and a double jump on it. And you can see that even if I press the double jump multiple times in the air, you only get one. Of course, we can tune that desired velocity to not be equal for the single and the double jump. So here, for example, I can make it so that the double jump just gives an upward velocity of one, which kind of just like stops your descent and makes it slower. This is kind of what you'd see in like New Super Mario Bros. U, where you have like a twirl in midair that allows you to kind of like slightly slow your descent or in Super Mario Galaxy. But yeah, the world is your oyster. Now there's one last thing that I want to mention about these jumps. You'll notice that they are full hops, all right? If I just tap the button for just a smidgen, just a one small moment, I still jump the maximum height. And Mario doesn't jump like that. It's actually really nice to be able to control your jumps to be able to jump slightly less than the full height if you just let go of the jump button. This is called a control jump, and you can see in this example, here is my full jump height. Now, here is a control jump. That is like a short hop. We don't rise quite the full amount. However, I've coded it so that they're both on the same jump button. So just like in Mario, we have one jump button that lets us more finely control exactly when we want to stop our jump height. And sometimes the player really wants that degree of control. Sometimes you really want to stop somewhere in the middle and not jump all the way to the maximum. If you don't want to hit your head on a ceiling or you want to land more quickly, etc. And you can even do this with controlled double jumps. So how do we do this? Well, here is the exact same code from before. This is a single jump and a double jump. Now, the difference is that we're adding this little block of code for a double jump. This button press is instead of being on press, it's while pressed. If you've seen a Pan and Coic video before on half A presses, you'll know that an important part of a jump button is the part where you let go. So how do we detect a controlled jump? Since we want to detect the button being let go, here I'm going to use not while pressed. So if you're pressing it down, you have a zero, and the moment you let go, that becomes a signal of one. But I want to make that a trigger from zero. I want that to just be one specific moment when you let go of the jump button. This gives us the moment we let go. That's part of a control jump, but also part of a control jump is that it only really applies when you're going up in the air. You don't really lose any speed or nothing really happens if you let go of the jump button on your way down. Some restrictions apply for other platformers. But the core idea is that we only want to do something if you let go of the jump button while you're also going up. So what we're gonna do is check, is our Y velocity greater than zero? Which tells us if we're going up. So if we're going up and we just let go of the jump button, then we're going to start doing the controlled jump, which is going to decelerate us down to zero. So when it's time to control our jump, we want to start accelerating towards zero speed. What we're going to do is we're going to start a timer. This timer goes off for some small amount of time. Here I just put six frames. You can tune it to your liking. This is the amount of time that we're going to be accelerating towards zero Y velocity. This is going to be stopping our upward ascent. Then I'm going to use this inversion node on to give us the opposite of our current Y speed. Then we're going to multiply that in so we're only decelerating when it's time to be doing the control jump. And then we bring that Y value mapped into our Y acceleration. This way we're applying a Y acceleration that brings us to zero speed the moment we let go of the jump button, but only if we are on our way up. And here you can see that even if I do a double jump, if I just tap the button, that's a very small jump. And if I do a full hop, we can gain a lot more height. These are all sorts of things you can try out. Remember that you can mix and match and combine them with different parts of a physics engine, but this is the core of how you customize a jump. With this, it should be pretty straightforward to define a triple jump or a wall jump or whatever. You just add touch sensors that are related, but overall, this is the idea. As per usual, I'll be providing the sample code down in the description so you can download and check out the code for yourself. But that's all I have for you today. In the future, I'll be showing you how you can combine different aspects of a physics engine to make something that moves around kind of like Mario. If you like this content, feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you around next time. Later!